Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning how to name acids and bases. It's... Welcome back. So we're going to be writing the names and formulas for acids and bases. Uh, but before we go any further, I want to remind you, these are all ionic compounds. So the naming rules for acids and bases are almost identical to the naming rules for ionic compounds. So if you uh, need some practice with that, just click this link right here, which will take you to the playlist of all my previous videos where I explain that. Okay, and I will also post that link in the description below. All right, so without uh, any further ado, let's get on into it. There are two types of acids. There are binary acids and polyatomic acids. Now, binary means two. So a binary acid has hydrogen and only one other element. So this first example here, HCl, is an example of the binary acid. All binary acid names start with the prefix hydro. And then you take the other element, you change the ending to IC, and then just stick the word acid on the end. So in this case, this is chlorine, which becomes chloric, and then acid. Okay? It's that simple. Now this is an example of a polyatomic acid because we have a polyatomic ion nitrate. Now within the polyatomic acids, there are two different kinds. There are the ates and the ites. Nitrate, obviously, is an ate, A-T-E, which becomes I-C. So instead of nitrate, this is nitric acid. Now compare that to this one, which is part of the ites, because NO2 is a polyatomic ion nitrite. I-T-E becomes O-U-S. So instead of nitri uh, nitrite, it becomes nitrous acid. Okay? And every single one will follow those rules. If it's a binary, it starts with hydro. If it's a polyatomic, there is no hydro. You change the ending to IC or OUS, depending on what the ending of the, the element is. Now I have one final example down here, which I have very specifically because anything that's got sulfur or phosphorus in it has a slightly different rule to it. Because if we follow the same rules, well, this is sulfate, which would become sulfic, and we would call this sulfic acid, which we don't. We call this sulfuric acid. And the same thing happens for phosphate. It's not phosphic acid, it's phosphoric acid. But that's just one of those things you kind of get used to the more you uh, play around with these things, all right? So that is going from the acid formula to the acid name. So I'm gonna reset here real quick and we'll go the other direction. Okay, so all we gotta do is remember the naming rules that I just mentioned, plus remember the ionic charges for, for each group, and we just write our formulas like normal, okay? So for example, we have carbonic acid. Well, this does not start with hydro, which means that this is one of the polyatomic uh, acids. It ends in IC, which means that this is an eight polyatomic, so this is carbonate. And because it's an acid, it's going to start with hydrogen. Carbonate is CO3. Hydrogen is plus one. Carbonate is negative two, so in order to balance that out, we need two hydrogens, so H2CO3. Okay, next example, hydroiodic acid. All right, well it has the prefix hydro, which means this is a binary acid. It's going to be hydrogen and one other element, which in this case, iodic is iodine, so H-I. Hydrogen's plus one, iodine negative one, they already add up to zero, therefore, we don't need any subscripts, so it's hi, the most friendly acid there is, <laughs> hydroiodic acid. All right, last example here, chlorous acid. So no hydro, so that means it's a polyatomic ion. It ends in O-U-S, which means this is an ite polyatomic ion. So this is chlorite acid. So we start with hydrogen. We have chlorite, which is ClO2. And if you don't remember that, you've got a, a, a reference chart that's got all the polyatomic ions on there. 
Hydrogen's plus one, chlorides is negative one. Again, they already add up to equal zero, so HClO2. All right, and that's how it's done. So I'm gonna reset now, and we're gonna do the exact same thing, except with the bases. So see you soon. All right, so here we go with the bases, and this should actually be a lot easier because these rules literally are the exact same rules as they are for ionic compounds. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. So we got KOH. K is potassium, OH is hydroxide. Potassium is not one of the transition metals, so we just write the name and move on. So this is potassium hydroxide. Very simple. All right, let's take a look at the next one. FeOH3. Well, Fe is iron, and iron is one of our transition metals. And if you recall, a transition metal needs a Roman numeral in the name, and that Roman numeral represents the charge of that ion. Now, the nice thing about bases is that the negative ion here is hydroxide, which always has a charge of negative one, meaning that the subscript is the charge of the metal that it's bonded to. It makes it very easy. So I don't really have to think too hard about this one. I'm gonna put iron, parentheses. This is a three, so it is iron three hydroxide. Okay, and that little trick will actually work for every single one of these bases, okay? Last example here, MgOH2. Mg is magnesium, which is not a transition metal, so I'm just gonna write the name as it is. Magnesium hydroxide. All right, so now I'm gonna reset one more time, and we're gonna go the other direction. So hold tight. All right, one final round. We're gonna take names and write formulas. So here we go, aluminum hydroxide. Well, aluminum is Al, hydroxide is OH. Aluminum has a charge of plus three. Hydroxide is negative one, so I need three hydroxides. So I'm gonna put a parentheses here and then put a three. All right, let's try the next one. Copper one hydroxide. So this one is telling me that copper has a charge of plus one. Well, the symbol for copper is Cu, uh, hydroxide is OH, this is plus one, that's negative one, they add up to zero, no subscripts are needed, so Cu, OH. Okay, last example, copper two hydroxide. So again, we're gonna take Cu and OH, but this time copper has a charge of plus two. Hydroxide is still negative one, so parentheses, two. And that's how it works. It's very simple. So if you have any further questions or if there's a particular name or formula that's you know tripping you up and you're having some particular troubles with, please feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you and help you as much as I can. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. While you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and you'll find that your life is that much better for it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Dude.